Hey Jacob, so I just came back from an unbelievable trip. I went to Cartagena, Colombia for five days from December 27th to New Year's Day. I went with my family, my father, my brother, my stepmother, my stepsister, and my stepbrother. And it was my first time ever going to South America, and the trip subsequently was an absolute blast. We explored so many new things, and it was just an unbelievable journey. And throughout that time, I recorded a lot of videos documenting the trip and it was specifically directed at you because you inspired me as an explorer. So this is my first ever explorer video. I made it specifically for you just so I can get some feedback and to really see, you know, if I have what it takes to do this kind of thing. And so yeah, I decided to just put it all together and make this video for you. I hope you enjoy it. You really inspired me and who knows, maybe one day I can join you and Andrukas on a trip. So, without further ado, here's my trip at Cartagena. My Cartagena adventure began Christmas night when I packed up my suitcase. The next day, I rode into New York City with my father and stepmother, where we spent the night at their apartment in Midtown Manhattan. We take off for Columbia tomorrow morning. We have to get up very early in the morning. I think we have to get up at around 4 o'clock and we have to leave the apartment at around 4.45 because we're going to have a car come pick us up and uh, we're going to go to John F. Kennedy International Airport here in New York and um, we gotta, hopefully we can get there at around 5, 5.15, somewhere around there try and get through security as fast as possible and our plane takes off at 8 a.m. and boarding begins at 7.30 Also, how do you like our Christmas tree? It's white. I've never had a white Christmas tree before. I think it's pretty cool. So it is currently 4.05 a.m. on Thursday the 27th of December. I just woke up. So pretty good. Um, yeah, so I'm still in the city, but I gotta get ready. We got a car coming to pick us up in about 45 minutes. And uh, yeah. This is the toughest part of the day, getting up. Remember how I said getting up in the, in the morning is the toughest part? This is the toughest part, saying goodbye to these guys. We left the apartment at precisely 4.45 a.m. and our driver drove about 20 minutes to JFK Airport for our 7.45 flight to Cartagena. Okay, so we made it to JFK. One thing about JFK, if you don't live in New York, is that it is one of the busiest airports not only in the United States, but in the entire world. It is the 22nd busiest airport. We grabbed some breakfast and then boarded our JetBlue flight. Your boy was stuck in the middle on the way there, by the way. We got off the plane and were immediately hit with a beautiful weather day of 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And I didn't mind it one bit. Alright, so we just got out of the airport and uh, now we're going with our driver and uh, I believe we're heading right to our hotel. We hopped on a really cool bus and we drove into the city. Some of the roads we drove on had the beach right next to it, and other roads were crammed with people and cars. It's a good thing I wasn't behind the wheel, because if I was, I'd probably be arrested for reckless driving. So this is where we're staying, Casa San Aguti. Want to feel what this water is like? Oh my God, it's gorgeous! It's absolutely warm. It's so nice. Cannot wait to swim. Okay, so we just had lunch, which was absolutely delicious. I had some chicken and fries, and um, now we are on our way to a mud bath. And I've never had one before, so this is a first for me. 
So, uh, we're gonna go to a mud bath, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, and then uh, later on we'll come back, get our hotel room, and we got a lot planned this week, and I think this is a pretty cool way to start it. Let me just say for the record that I had absolutely no stinking idea what a mud bath entails, but my obliviousness would eventually catch up to me, just like our lack of Spanish caught up to us. To quickly sum up the situation that you just saw, we were looking for an ATM and my father got separated from his driver while searching for it in a plaza. Welcome to the mud bath. Oh boy. Oh boy. Going up the steps to the mud bath. Oh man. Oh man, <laughs> what have I gotten myself into? Woo! <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It was, without a shadow of a doubt, the weirdest thing that I have ever felt in my entire life. But I enjoyed it. First mud bath of my life, and it was well worth it. Jacob, if you ever come to Carta Cartagena, highly recommend it. The mud bath was an hour away from our hotel, so we had a long drive back. Okay, so we are back at the hotel, and we just got our hotel room. And um, I actually want to show you the view from our deck. Busy night here in Cartagena. Really cool stuff. We got a little sitting area right here. Yeah, pretty good stuff. Okay, so it is day two of our trip here in Cartagena. Yesterday the trip got off to a bombastic start with the mud bath and everything, but uh, it's pretty early. It's about 8.15, 8.20 in the morning. Uh, I'm heading down to meet my father for breakfast and um, yeah, I think today we're going to be doing a little tour of the city, so should be pretty cool. Our first stop was the Castillo San Felipe Fortress on the hill of San Lazaro. It was constructed by the Spanish during the colonial era, and the fortress is one of the most visited attractions in Cartagena, and rightfully so. Nearly five centuries old, the fortress is still well preserved, and the views of the city from around it were absolutely breathtaking. We had a personal guide show us around the fortress, and he told us so much about its history. In 1697, during the War of the Grand Alliance, the fortress came under attack by the French privateer Sir Bernard de Jean Baron de Pointis. Cartagena was the center of Spanish colonial power and wealth during this time period, and Pointis was able to get the approval of King Louis XIV to execute this invasion. It wound up being an enormous success for Pointis as he conquered Cartagena and he became a very rich man. In order to prevent a similar outcome from happening again, the fortress underwent major repairs in 1739 by Jose de Herrera y Sotomayor. Just two years later, another attack occurred as Edward Vernon invaded the city with over 100 ships and 20,000 men. Vernon was a British admiral and he attempted to conquer the city in order to destroy Spanish trading ports in order to hurt Spanish financing. The English and Spanish were fighting in the War of Jenkins' Ear during this time period. The bizarre name comes from an incident involving British sea captain Robert Jenkins. According to historical accounts, Jenkins' ship, 
the Rebecca was stopped and attacked by Spanish Coast Guards. While causing havoc to Jenkins' ship and crew, the Spanish tied up the captain and cut off one of his ears. This was just another chapter in a long and ugly history between the British and the Spanish during the 18th century as both sought to dominate the New World. The fortress was really the only hope for Cartagena to fend off this attack by Vernon. The city only had between 3,000 and 6,000 fighters with only six ships. The man in charge of Cartagena's defense was Admiral Blas de Lezo. De Lezo knew that with the fortress's enhancements, which included a new battery, this would be a key to winning, but he also knew that heavy rain and disease would be a big part as well. The outer defenses of the city did eventually fall to Vernon. However, just as Delezo predicted, Vernon's crew was suffering from diseases such as typhus and malaria. Still, Vernon and his men attempted to storm the fortress's walls by ladder at night. They tried attacking from the south side of the fortress where the walls were the shortest, but at the same time they also put themselves in front of the fort's cannons. Delezo and his men fired away on Vernon's men, and when sunrise came, a fourth of the 2,000 men that Vernon sent ashore were gone. It only got worse for Vernon as heavy rain began as well in April. Eventually, it was too much, and Vernon retreated, and Delezo forever became a hero in Cartagena. My favorite part about the fortress was going through the tunnels. They were so cool and long. My stepmother gets claustrophobic, so she wasn't a big fan of the tunnels, and my stepfather had sandals on, so that didn't really help him. But me... I enjoyed this from start to finish. This was so awesome. I never really have been in tunnels in my life. And I like to get out of my comfort zone in different areas and just really see what other areas are like. And I definitely embraced this. And some of the tunnels that we went to were very steep and very slippery. However, I just had a blast. I couldn't stop smiling. I know it's kind of creepy sometimes. But yeah, it was just really cool. Yeah, we need to go back up. You need to turn around. Yeah. There's no way out. It's under, it's under work. Yeah, it's under yeah, that's, that's the high side. That's the high side. So Water. Do we have to go back this way? Exactly. We have to go back. Actually, that's the aim, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Guys, two purposes. On the left, there is a tunnel connecting with the whole castle, yeah. right? To put dynamite, right? Surrounding the whole castle, sorry, right? And on the right here, it's uh, just to escape, to abandon. So, in case of the full enemy invasion, they dynamite and abandon this immediately, right? And now, as you can see, water is the high tide, right? It's uh, usually in the afternoon, you know? And they got, they got like a torture chamber there. Oh, they torture, torture the enemy, okay? They tie for hands and feet, and they lie down on the, on the, uh, on, on the tunnel, where, with jump like this, and tight, right? And they let the high tide invade him, cockroaches and rats, to confess the information, you see? Oh, All right, guys. So now I let's like go that. back, yeah, okay? Yeah. Let's go back. The same way. Wow. <laughs> Actually, this is pretty easy. Only time going up is better. Yeah. Boy. That was crazy. But that was really cool. Back out in sunlight. Now we're going down some stairs. Get a lot of this. Once we were done visiting the fortress, we traveled to a monastery which was located on a high hill. And this monastery was absolutely beautiful. And just like the fortress, it had some incredible views.
and our last stop for the day was at a jewelry store, which also had a mini museum. The museum was dedicated to the mine workers of Cartagena who went out of their way to find the material needed to make some of these jewelry products. Okay, so we're back at our hotel here in Cartagena. Basically just wrapped up our activities for the day. Um, we just got back from lunch. I had a delicious salmon. And yeah, so we have the next couple of hours to ourselves before we grab some dinner later on at night. But tomorrow we're hopping on a boat and we'll look forward to bringing you guys along with us. All right, day three. It is our boat trip. We arrived at the dock bright and early that morning and hopped on a boat to head out to the Rosario Islands. The ride along the coast of Cartagena was mind-blowingly awesome. Okay, so we just reached the end of the bay and now we are heading out into the ocean. We eventually anchored and myself and my brother Eric went snorkeling. This was actually the second time within the course of two weeks that I went snorkeling as I had recently gone down to Puerto Rico the week before and went snorkeling when I was leading a mission trip. I'm going to today. Stop it. And as you can see Eric wasn't really that thrilled about being filmed. Once we finished snorkeling we jumped back on the boat and continued our voyage to the Rosario Islands and I got the best seat in the house sitting on the front of the boat and admiring the gorgeous ocean water. Okay, so we just pulled over for lunch and we are on this unbelievable island. Look at this. That's where we're eating. But I figured while I'm waiting for my food, why don't I show you guys around a little bit. First of all, let me apologize for the horrible, horrible quality this footage is in. I promise I did not mean to do this. It was just me being very lazy with my camera. And again, I apologize for this horrendous footage. But basically, I searched around the islands and I saw basically a little area where the locals visit. And it was pretty cool just seeing the way of life around here. Let's see what we got here. It's very rocky. Ow, ow, ah. Ow. Let's see. Wow, even the grass is sharp. Let's explore, shall we? Hmm. Kind of looks like. Well, it looks like it used to be a house or something. I don't know what this place was. Pretty cool though. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna head back. Once we finished lunch, we hopped back on our boat and went to this crazy party area of the Rosario Islands. There are boats with people everywhere. They are blasting music. It's pretty crazy. And uh, I think we're going to try and get onto the beach up there. So, we'll see how it goes. This place was absolutely insane. There were people partying everywhere. And those roofs that you see in the water over there, those were party roofs. And they had tables literally sinking into the water. So I was very careful and I made sure not to bring my camera because I didn't want to risk dropping it in the water. We explored around the island for a little while longer, but then we decided to get massages. And it was the first time I ever got one. And my father filmed me from the boat. Now getting a massage on a beach, which is fantastic. <laughs> I 
right now, he's hating it. Yeah, I'm not really a massage guy. But anyway, we wrapped up our day after that and then headed back to the main shore. And things got even more interesting the next night. The next night, we hopped into our van and we drove off to a place called Foodies where we made our own personal dinner. We had two chefs guiding us through the cooking process and they were both very welcoming and friendly. And they provided us with our own personal kitchen gear we would wear. Check out how spiffy I looked wearing this thing. We were going to be making a lot of food on this night and it was going to take a lot of effort from everybody in order to make sure everything came out nice and smooth and delicious. And the process is very, very, very simple. Please wash your hands. So the main entree for the night was beef, which was right up my alley because I love, love steak. The first thing that I did to help out was cut out the creamy white meat on the inside of a coconut. It's so very small. It's so good. You know the yuca? I only got one small piece so far. Yeah, no, I don't know. After cutting out the white pieces of meat inside of the coconut, we then cut up pieces of onion and we also cut up pieces of tomato and then we would put it all into one big salad bowl. Oh, and I also tried flipping food inside of a pan. Eh, let's just say that didn't turn out so well. Yeah, you it's going over. It's not going over. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Slow Finally, after about two hours of cooking, we all sat down and had ourselves one hell of a feast. Our last day of the trip was New Year's Eve, and we drove for more than an hour from our hotel in Cartagena to a bird zoo called Aviario Nacional de Colombia. That's right, a bird zoo. And that was another first for me on this trip. This zoo contained hundreds of kinds of birds that I have never seen before with my own two eyes. There was a huge net surrounding the entire zoo so that none of the birds could fly out of there. The whole experience was really cool. This bird. Are you still with us? Are you not this off? They are aggressive. Also, all After seeing so many kinds of birds, we drove all the way back to our hotel, and then we wrapped up our vacation later that night with a New Year's Eve family dinner. Hey. Thanks for tuning in. This is from Cartagena. This is Ryan Tui.